Hello D1 and welcome to another video. Um, what we're going to be doing today is we are going to be doing a pictorial. This might look familiar. We've done pictorials in the past when we talked about biomes, when we talked about Lewis and Clark. Um, so you're familiar with the pictorial. So just like what we've done in the past, what you're going to do is day one, which is Monday, you are going to just be watching me go through the pictorial. Do I expect you to leave knowing everything we talked about? No, I do not. What I expect, though, is on Tuesday you come back, you re-watch this video, and your job to process this pictorial is you are going to be recreating it yourself. So you're going to watch this video, you're going to absorb the information again on Tuesday, and then you're going to recreate it. Do I expect you to, yours to look exactly like mine, be absolutely perfect? No, I do not. I do expect you, though, to try personal best with this and make sure that it is neat and that you get all this information down. Got it? Perfect. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and you're gonna listen and you're gonna follow along as I go through. All right, so what we're gonna be talking about today is magnetic force. I know we're not together, but I really hope you are going to repeat after me when I ask you to. So I would like for you to say magnetic force. Magnetic force is a type of force that is most commonly found in magnets. We can find magnetic forces in other places as well, but we're going to see it most commonly in magnets. And really briefly, boys and girls, I just want to point out, you're going to see Miss Walsh is going to be using different colors as she goes through, and that's to help her kind of organize her thoughts. If, for whatever reason, you do not have these colors, that is okay. Um, you can just go ahead and do it in any colors that you do have, or if you don't have colors, that's all right as well. But my expectation is that you still recreate this at home. All right, so we're talking about magnetic force. Let's go ahead and look at the description of magnetic force. Go ahead and say description for me. Your turn. So the description is just kind of explaining what is it like? How can I describe it? What is its traits? So for a magnetic force we have two different types of traits. First we have attraction. And when you think of attraction we think of Two people who are in love, attraction, right? When two people are in love, they're attracted towards each other. They want to be with one another. And then we have repulsion. Repulsion or repel is when we have people who do not like each other and they're like, Ugh, get away from me. So those are going to be the two types of of forces that we experience with magnets. We have attraction and repulsion. Ugh. So with magnets, when we see attraction, what happens is the magnets have a pull feeling. They come towards each other and that's a pull feeling, right? So if these our little lovebirds right here, they're pulling towards each other, they're moving closer. The same thing happens with magnets. And then with repelling or repulsion, what happens is our magnets are pushing away from each other. So when you think about these people who are, you know, not in love, they're not attracted, they're repulsed by each other, they're pushing away from each other. So with repulsion, we have a push feeling. All right. So now you may be thinking in your brain, well, Miss Walsh, how is this created? How does this attraction repulsion, how does this pull and push happen? So we're gonna be asking ourselves how is it created. Well, it is created with two poles. We have our north pole, your turn. 
and on magnets, on specifically U magnets or bar magnets, you'll see that symbolized by an N. They are negatively charged. What are North Poles? I hope you said negatively charged. And we'll see that with a minus sign. Something's negative, we're subtracting, we're taking away, it's negative. Then we have a south pole, which on a bar magnet or on those horseshoe U magnets, we will see it an S. And they are positively charged. What are they? Positively charged. And you will see that with a plus sign, right? Someone's positive, they're adding, they're contributing. We're going to see that with a plus sign. So, with our two different poles, north and south, what are our two poles? North and south. We see that opposite poles create The force of attraction. What does it create the force of? Attraction. So what happens is north and south actually attract towards each other. So the north and south, they're like mwah, 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 mwah towards one another. So you see a plus sign and a negative sign, you might also see those on the magnets. The negative pulls closer towards the plus sign and the plus sign pulls closer to the negative sign. Now what happens when we have same pulls? Well when we have same pulls, meaning north and north, south with south, what happens is it creates the force of repulsion. What force does it create? Repulsion. And what happens with repulsion, as we talked about a couple minutes ago, is they push away from each other. So north and north are like, ugh, and south and south are ugh, right? So the negative and negative, they push away from each other, and plus and plus push away from each other. Opposites attract and same repel. So you'll see repel is kind of shown like they're pushing away from each other. They kind of have like these little rainbows of forces that kind of push them away from each other so that they cannot connect or match up. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna look at some of the properties of magnets or the magnetic force rather. Properties and properties is another way of saying traits, attributes, it's all the same. So properties. So there is kind of an invisible force field around magnets. So if you think of the movie Incredibles, if you've seen the movie Incredibles, you think of Violet. She's the one that can turn invisible, but she can also kind of form this force field that can kind of protect her and her family. Um, and so a force field around a magnetic allows it to either attract or repel other objects or other magnets rather. So there's a visible force field around the magnet. The stronger a magnet is, the stronger the force or the push or pull. And the same goes for if it's a weaker magnet, the weaker the force. So maybe you have um, a magnet at home that doesn't really stick well to the fridge or doesn't really hold a lot of weight. Like if you want to put papers on the fridge, um, that would be a weaker magnet, and the for which means that the force is weaker as well. So it doesn't stick as well. But if you have a stronger magnet, it's going to hold on better. It's going to be able to carry more weight, 
um, it's because it has a stronger force. Also with magnets or magnetic force, the force can be increased, meaning it can be stronger or um, greater. And it can also be decreased, meaning it can be less or it can be weaker. So increased, it's getting bigger. And decreased, it's getting smaller or weaker. And it can be done so by distance. So if we have these two magnets that are right next to each other, the force is going to be really strong. Whereas we have two magnets right here that are really far apart from each other, it's going to be weaker. Or obstacles. Go ahead and say that word for me. Obstacles. Obstacles can be other objects. So like I was talking about maybe at home, you have a magnet. So we have like a magnet here and we can say this is the fridge. Well, if you have a piece of paper between it, it makes the attraction weaker or the force weaker. And so um, anything like distance or obstacles can help increase the force or decrease it. Okay, now let's go ahead and move on and talk about inventions and application. Go ahead and say inventions and application. Inventions are things that are created and application is how we use those objects that are created. So we have magnetic force that, and we use magnets or the magnetic force pretty frequently. And a great place you might see this is actually your kitchen. And we're going to talk about some of those different inventions and applications that we see in the kitchen. So you're thinking of your kitchen right now. What is probably the most obvious piece of furniture or appliance that you see in your kitchen that kind of tells you, hey, I'm in the kitchen right now? That would be the fridge, at least for me. When I'm thinking of a kitchen, I'm like, hey, there's a fridge right there. I'm in the kitchen. So we have our fridge, right? And on our fridge, we have magnets. And many of you use the magnets on your fridge actually for your experiments last week. And so magnets in its simple form, some we have like with crazy designs, some we just have that are like regular squares. Magnets in its design are an invention that kind of help us have control of a magnetic force. So they allow us to stick things up onto a fridge. Um, they allow us to attach th different things together. Um, but yeah, like if you guys have a spelling test, you know, your parents are proud of or a drawing you made, you may have seen um, them use a magnet to hold it up onto a fridge. Other things we see in our kitchen, maybe if you are at your countertop, and you are trying to get into a cabinet, in your cabinet you might notice that there are magnets. Not everybody has these, but some people do. I know I had these while I was at school, but I don't have these at my own um, kitchen at home. But some kitchens have these little latches right here that are magnets. And what it does is it helps the cabinets to close all the way. So there's a magnet on the cabinet door, like we see here, and there's magnets um, in the inside of the cabinet, so that way you can go ahead and um, close it all the way. So that way nobody can see the inside of your cabinet if you're keeping all your cleaning supplies there. You don't want your guests to see. Um, you use these latches to help keep it closed. So over here we have on the kitchen table, I'm not sure you would see all of these on your kitchen table, but pretend like you would. Maybe you're planning a vacation of some sort, or maybe you're working on like a Boy Scout or Girl Scout project. You might see a map. We've also know our explorers used maps back in the day, and we'll talk about them in just a minute. 
And with our map, maybe you will see a compass. A compass is a magnet that we kind of get to travel along with us. And you will see our magnet is pointing north. I don't want to talk too much about it because you're going to be watching a video later this week that talks about uh, compasses. But a compass is always going to point north and it's a natural magnet. Or it's a man-made magnet, rather. And then we're going to come over here. Maybe you're looking out your window and you see, oh, they're doing construction. Well, with construction, they also use magnets quite a bit to kind of help them um, get things from point A to point B. So we see with these, this construction over here, we have what I would call a crane. Go ahead and say that word. Crane. A crane is a device, like I had just mentioned, that kind of gets things from point A to point B. And it's not just things, it's really heavy things. So you think about when they're building houses, they have to carry big, big old pieces from one, or like beams from one place to another. Um, and so they use magnets to kind of help them with that. So maybe they're building a building, or maybe they're just trying to move something out of the way so they can eventually build something else. All right, now that we've talked about description, described magnetic force, we talked about how it's created, we talked about the properties, and we talked about some inventions and applications. Let's go ahead and look at some interesting facts. I know you guys enjoy when we go over interesting facts, whether it's about our explorers, whether it's about our biomes, interesting facts is always a fun little piece to look at. Whoops. Interesting facts. Make sure that's a T. All right. One interesting fact is that Earth has a magnetic force. And you probably already know that from the video we watched last week, and we're also going to talk about it again later in another video this week. But Earth has its own magnetic force. Another interesting fact is that magnetic north, like we see on our magnets, they're symbolized by an N. They're also is a negative force or negative charge and true north are different they are not the same thing they are in fact different and lastly explorers have been using magnets for over a thousand years. So we think about our explorers that we've talked about and all the traveling that they did. Well, they used maps like we saw on our kitchen table and compasses to help them find their way. So the, mag the compasses would always point north and so they would use that to help them kind of find their direction or um, their way as they were trying to travel from point A to point B. We know some of our explorer friends didn't um, have successful voyages. They were they ended up getting lost, um, but that's not the fault of the compass. That is the fault of the user who is using it. So that being said, this is the conclusion of our pictorial. Remember, if it's Monday, you were just sitting and watching, taking it in. If it is Tuesday, you're now going to go ahead after watching this for the second time, make your own. I did um, take a picture of this and put a copy of it for you to copy afterwards so that way you're not having to pause during the video and go back and forth, but rather you can just kind of look at it as it is posted. That is it, you guys. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I will talk to you soon. Bye!